when did we lose the ability to think for ourselves? Yeah, you know, that's when, when did, when did that go out the window that, well, no, I did some reading and through my research, I've come to the conclusion for me as an individual, well, well, you, you must be a conspiracy theorist then if you're doing your own research, you know what I mean? I don't, it's just funny. It's, it's funny, you know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. Oh, hey there, ladies and gents. Thanks for tuning in to the show. I'm your host, Tony Berardo. Uh, today's episode, not surprisingly, tons of fun. I say that for most episodes because it's true. They're a lot of fun. Uh, today, I have a, uh, a good friend, Johnny Jacobowski. And uh, Johnny is from Minnesota, don't you know? Um, he's got a couple podcasts. He's got his own business. He's been on the show a couple times. Uh, but I wanted to kind of shoot the shit with him, mainly because, man, there's just been... The landscape of cinema, social media, our culture, a lot's changed. Um, some for the good, some for the not so good. So we dip a, a lot into those conversations of, you know, has the wokeness changed cinema a little bit? Um, has it not? We talk a little bit about politics and and the division between left, right, up, down, black, white. It's um, it's it's kind of a weird time. And what's even more strange is. This is the best time to be alive, but depending on what side of the fence you're on or what you read or who you talk to, sometimes you think that the grass is not so green um, where, you're, where you're standing. And in fact, it is. You can create content and get viewed by 6 million people tomorrow just off something that you like talking about and become famous and create a living off that. And it's pretty special. And if you can take care of yourself and take care of your community and your household and just focus on what you like to do, I think you forget about a lot of the noise that's out there. It all kind of encompasses into being real and being yourself. And overall, it's just a, a good conversation. It's always cool talking with Johnny. And, you know, we've never met in person. In the last few months, I feel like I've gotten to know him a lot. And uh, you should definitely follow his podcast. I'll leave all the links in the episode notes below. But check all that out. Uh, everyone, please help me welcome Johnny Jacobowski. We start up our football podcast tomorrow because me and my brother, we do a season, you know, every NFL season we do a podcast, but I'm excited to try this out for it and yeah. see what it sounds like. So, What's that podcast called that you know? The Bowski Bros. The Bowski Bros. Fucking love it. <laughs> yeah. It, it almost should... sounds like anytime I want to say like Bowski. I think Big Lebowski, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to throw on like a Boston accent to it. Oh, yeah. Even though, I mean, you guys aren't out of Boston. But. Bows, ba yeah, how would you, I can't even do it. Ba fucking, Bowski. Fucking Bowski podcast, kid. <laughs> the Bowski podcast. The fucking yeah. Bowski podcast. You fucking go yeah. to bar. I'll take my fucking car and we'll fucking grab a couple of Rokowskis. You got your car keys? <laughs> I'm sorry, you think khakis or keys? car keys? I say khakis. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, dude. So th thanks for thanks for hopping on again. I'm glad. Uh, even though your you know podcast isn't fully set up, I mean it looks good. We're, I mean, what are you uh, you down in the basement? What do you got going on down there? Yeah, so I'm I'm in a, a cinder blocked walled Ooh. basement room that I've been trying to convert into s something of my liking. So it, it still has a way to go as far as soundproofing goes, but sure. It's it's getting there. It at least has hundreds of fun Funko Pops set up in it already. So, well, if that's not the most important thing, then I don't know what is. I mean, you know, what are we gonna talk about? I don't even know, dude. You tell me. You, it seems like you got a, a lot going on. Your recent videos you've released. I, I feel like I've learned a lot about Tony Berardo in the past. I don't know, month or so in in everything you've been putting out. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, that's kind of the goal, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, it's been it's been gnarly just being a, a creator the last couple of years. And I, I think the one thing I've realized over everything happened with the pandemic and then personally and then, you know, physically, it's 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 made me more cognizant of kind of what this thing is. Yeah. Life. Mm -hmm. Like I was I, I've been doing so many podcasts. I have like 10 on deck that I'm so behind, like even the one you and I do. I mean, what are we at now? September 6th. I might yeah. post this in October just because I'm so behind. 
Yeah. And I did that kind of on a purpose just because I wanted to put out a bunch of content. This last podcast I just did with this guy, Philip, uh, he's probably one of the oldest guys I've had on the podcast, but old friend of mine. Um, and we just talked a lot about the country and where we're headed and like what, like very deep conversation. And it was good to get that out because that's what I've been thinking the last couple of years. Not that I want to flee the country. Or anything. Just the fact of like, there's so much more important stuff going on in our lives besides what we like see on our devices and reading the headlines. You know what I mean? Like even I know you're a big football guy and I used to be too. Like I was in fantasy football, you know, I would make hundreds of thousands of dollars or lose hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on how my team look. And for years I did fantasy football and I watched games and those 16 weeks were like what I lived for and it was great. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But lately, bro, like I haven't been watching football and it's been great. And no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Go Pat Go. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's just it's it's weird, man, because you you have these different things that happen in your life and and you know, not saying that people shouldn't watch football because I think it's the greatest sport on earth. But it's just this personally, there's been so many things that I've realized where I'm like, I need to keep doing what I want to do. Um because, you know, it might not last forever. And then yeah. also I, I just looked at like from a legacy standpoint, you know, what I want this show to be and what I want my life to be and, and what I want to do. You know, it's just, it's, it's been eye opening, man. It's been interesting the last couple of years. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I need to start relaying that from like a creative standpoint. Cause I haven't been doing that. Mm -hmm. It's always been like, maybe subconsciously I'm my first couple episodes, my first hundred episodes rather of my podcast, maybe subconsciously it was like, I want to help people. I want to do this. And then I'm going to put out stuff that people want to hear and want to do. And then I'm like, you know, people might get value out of it, but then there's also a part of me that's like, I, I kind of create content just so people like it. Like I was okay. doing a lot of that for a while. You know what I mean? And now I'm like, fuck it, dude, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do and create the content that I, I want to do. And then if people like it, great. And if not, you know, whatever, who cares? Like, what are we worried about here? And yeah, that's, mm -hmm. so that's what I've been putting out the last like six weeks or so. I feel like I've seen like, uh, I think I've even told you this too, that the authentic side where I think people kind of crave and cling to authenticity, right? If somebody's willing to be vulnerable and open up and kind of say, no, there is shit that goes on in my life. Right. Like uh, people are attracted to that as opposed to, you no, know, I'm a content creator and everything is great all the time. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got the Sony A5 and everything's great and the lens is great. Yeah. yeah. A perfect, no filter, perfect content. Yeah. Like people, that's not, I, but I think we're so, we've been so used to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like the last, whatever, however long social media has been around. We've been so used to filters and the Kardashians and fucking everything's perfect and pretty and influencers and that shot that like shows, you know, the iPhone of like, yeah, like that shot of like everything's perfect in the background and the lighting's great and the key light's great and your audio equipment is fantastic. Like all that yeah. stuff. So we're, that's how we think everything is like every, that's how we think everything is. That's how we think it should be when we go to the gas station and fill up our tank. Like, why is everyone not smiling and pretty? Yeah. And then you have to kind of like think to yourself, wait a minute. Oh, so that's all bullshit. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's yeah. not like that in real life. Oh, okay. And uh, when we see that authentic content, we, we crave it. I think we've gone so long without it. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely, I definitely crave it. Whenever I see an authentic piece, I'm, I'm going to like it a lot faster than I'm going to like something that's not, you know? Yeah. Like uh, I love those, uh, those BTS videos. Like sometimes. Oh yeah, for, for sure. Yep. Better than, you know, anything else. You know, when you start creating content, seeing content like that, then you also realize that you're so submerged in, uh, such bullshit all the time. Not just what the things I just mentioned, but also like movies too, you know, movies are getting so, CGI and you know obviously you host a podcast about being a nerd and movies and pops and all that and you know Sam Raimi's take on Spider-Man is different than No Way Home right mm -hmm. um and 
there's good and bad in both, but there's one thing that was really beautiful about those those three Spider Mans was it like it was it was Tobey Maguire and stuntman fucking hanging off a string, yeah, going behind a green screen versus like Tom Holland doing audio in a room and just a CGI fake dude. It's more aesthetically pleasing naturally. Yeah, and let's be honest, No Way Home and Tom Holland. I mean, those fucking come on. <laughs> oh gosh, Great. there's it's the best. So good. You know, especially for nerds like us at our age. But you know, there's also something very beautiful about Blade. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the first comic book movie, really. I mean, aside from Batman, like from a, literally took Marvel and saved the studio. Yeah. Got no kidding. That bankruptcy. Like fact. Blade did that. Wesley Snipes, the criminal, took those fuckers. To yeah. where they're at today, and then we course, thank you, Wesley, for thank, the thanks, Wes. Yeah, uh, no doubt. I wish you were in somehow uh, a cameo reboot in Blade. They they you deserve that. I wonder. I wonder. We we're gonna see how cool would that be if he was like the older, wiser vampire, you know, mm-hmm. like instead of um, what was his name? What was the old white dude, Whistler? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. That was like coaching Wesley at the young age. Yep. How cool would it be if it was like Wesley Snipes? But we don't. But- He's not Blade in it. He's Whistler. You know, like that would be a nod. I think they they need to start doing more of that just across the board. I mean, you saw it with No Way Home. You, mm. you you tickled the, for lack of a better term, you tickled the adult child, right? Mm. That yes. so and that's what everybody's like. Bring back my childhood and take my money. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's why there was such this massive blowback when you know Keaton and Batgirl and all that stuff got pulled with Michael. Mm. Which you know we could talk about that too, but. Uh, yeah, just kind of going back to that, like that's that's the thing is the CGI world is has numbed us to where yeah. you don't appreciate real authentic content. You know, I've been trying to watch a lot more like Hulu and stuff where um, two things. Number one, I'm not numb to CGI. So like I'm trying to watch like I started watching The Patient with Steve Carell. Really oh, good. Yeah. Sur- surprisingly good. But, you know, there's no CGI in that. Loved it. I'm I'm digging it because I'm appreciating the characters and I'm I'm getting immersed in a little bit, um, yeah. and you know same thing with Netflix. Like Netflix was great. You got the Gray Man that I just watched that, but a lot of that is like action sequences and CGI that's a little over the top. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, like even John Wick, like mm. keeps its roots to where it's not all CGI like The Matrix. You know, it's actual stunt drivers on bikes and they're doing these fucking taekwondo moves and shit. But, you yeah. know, some moves are just so out there where it's the CGI and it's like, I don't need that. I don't need that hit of dopamine. Like, I could watch that any time. I'd rather prefer that authentic acting. You know, Scorsese said it best when, you know, these Marvel movies might ruin film. But mm. I don't know if they're going to ruin film. I just think they need to be in a different category. Yeah. I, like, as the viewer, because... Now Scorsese and all these other directors are trying to be that. Yeah. I think like I would even venture to say as a geek myself and a creator, I would even say I'd prefer to have like an AMC that only shown only shows me classic movies and 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 movies that are film, like film film. Yeah. Yeah. And then I want fucking an entirely different company, a totally different movie theater. That only shows me Marvel movies and DC movies and, and CGI movies and Matrix and sci-fi and, you know, aesthetically pleasing theater because it, they shouldn't be in the same category. Yeah. In my opinion. Because they're both Don't, great. Well, but, they are both great, but they are different. But even to tail off of, you know, just the authentic look of things, like why did Top Gun do so well? Mm, such you know what I mean? Because, yeah. I mean, number one, they stayed away from anything political. And then Smart. number two, it, it's almost like when you know, like the effort that went into it on top of good acting and a good story, it just mm-hmm. makes, it makes it that much more successful, you know? So true. That's probably the, the closest and most realest example of everything I just babbled about for the past two minutes. Top yeah. Gun really embodies that. Mm-hmm. Like Top Gun shouldn't be shown near Thor. Um, even though it wasn't <laughs> yeah. good, right, but it's like it's just a different thing, man. It's not 
And if you see Top Gun, anybody who hasn't seen it, unfortunately, you'll have to stream it. I don't know if it's in theaters anymore. It might be in some. Um, but that might have been the greatest... I don't even want to say sequel. It might be the greatest movie that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, just I done think. well. Dude, just everything from the acting and, and the, the nods to the original 30 years ago, uh, the character buildup, the story, the fact that the, you met these characters, even the love interest, Tom Cruise love interest, she was not in the first one. But she yeah. said numerous things, if you watch the original, to where it's like you could almost envision their relationship in that 30-year 30, mm-hmm. 30 gap that we missed them. You can see it, but there was no origin story. There was no buildup. It was just all done in the writing and in that movie. And then, of course, there was no CGI in the movie. Not one look. Yeah. It was all real. Tom, Tom Cruise won't allow it. <laughs> no. Fucking genius. And you see this new stunt that's going around, this viral video that for Mission Impossible? Is that the one where he's no. on a couple, uh, C, not seaplanes, but... Yeah, he's on the plane. The single propeller, yeah. Yeah, and he's just, like, standing up. With a right? mic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the guy's an animal. He's a freak. <laughs> I fucking love it, bro. And, like, even in that, uh, The Last Mission Impossible, which I thought was great, uh, with Henry Cavill. Which one was that? Fallout? I can't um, remember. Yeah, great. Like, you could have ended it there and been fine, but of course, it's Tom Cruise. He's going to go until he fucking... Probably dies. Yeah, Steve <laughs> Irwin's it. And, too soon? And, no. Okay. You're good. <laughs> it's been like 10 years. But it's just so crazy how the stunts that he did, especially in that movie, where they flew out of... I saw the behind the scenes. This is where I love the BTS stuff. He falls out of the plane. Uh, it's him and Henry Cavill up there, and they literally do the jump for real. I don't even know how thousand, how many thousands of feet up, but they do the jump and everything for real. And there was a camera in that one shot. And it was one cameraman. He's just falling out of the plane. And Tom Cruise is there and goes with him. And that's a real stunt. And they film that and they put that in the movie. Like if they that is absolutely, that up, It's insane. And I think now that you just said that, I think we're talking about two different things. What I have seen that, and that's absolutely insane, where, you know, we got one shot at this. I mean, even... Props to the camera guy being somebody who who operates a camera, like how hard that would be where you're just falling backwards out of a plane. But I just saw a TikTok last night where I think it was a, a maybe it was an old Top Gun promo, but he was on a, a smaller plane, just two person plane. And he's like standing up while the other guy in the back is flying it. And he's just like holding onto the wing, like talking to a camera on probably another plane promoting Top Gun. But then the plane like turns sideways and Tom Cruise is just still stay- standing, holding onto the plane. I'm like, this guy is, you're absolutely right. Like, it's like, he's going to do it till it kills him, probably. And, and that was the original clip I was talking about. I just went off oh, okay. of Tom Cruise being an animal. There's so many of them. Yep. There's so many. But he's been that way for forever. I mean, even in the original Top Gun, I remember reading something to where that's when he first learned how to drive a, a motorcycle. Um, oh, or- okay picked up a passion rather for driving him. Um, Cause you know, of course he did in days of thunder and all those other movies, but he really picked up a passion. And ever since then he's done his own stunts and broke his ankles and legs and, you know, but that type of guy make fun of him all you want for his religious beliefs. This is another yeah. great reason why religion shouldn't divide the world because we have a man like top ground or excuse me. We have a man like Tom Cruise literally embodies film and, it just makes you want to go see the movies. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw that movie in theaters twice, but I saw that movie Top Gun Maverick in theaters and I cried. I laughed. Uh, I fucking got teary eyed. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's just between crying and like getting teary eyed. Like teary eyed yeah. for me was like when they were at the bar and they're, you know, doing the flashback of that song and Tom Cruise is out on the beach watching Goose's yeah. uh, play the song. And then Tom Cruise just kind of does that little knock. And then I'm just like, <laughs> like I get that fucking, <laughs> that guy yeah, yeah. to try to hold it back. And I, I look around and every guy is fucking doing it. And I'm like, dude, this is why Tom Cruise does what he does. He just brought all of us strangers together to enjoy yeah. this movie. And, um, you know, No Way Home did that for me as well. Oh, it, abs- it right. absolutely I mean, did it for me. Thank you, Andrew Garfield, for holding everything up on a pedestal. 
No but doubt. He was the driver of a lot of that. And then he got, spoiler alert, fucking Aunt May met her demise. That was fucking brutal. So there was a lot of moments in there. But then in between those moments of sadness and despair, you're like these epic action sequence that kind of get you back up to where you need to be. And Top Gun Maverick just was not like that because it was like just a smooth, emotional action. Uh, I don't even want to say roller coaster because the, the whole thing was a peak for me. Yeah. You know, like from the second it started, it was just fucking boom. Mm-hmm. Money the whole time. I mean, God, just unbelievable. I can't say I can't say enough about how great that is. Well, to me, it's smart if you're uh, if you're a studio making a movie to play on the heartstrings of those of us in our 30s and 40s mm-hmm. and bring back some stuff that existed in our childhood. Right. I mean, that's that's a money maker for sure. But not only that, but to do it right. So, yeah, you have Top Gun, you have No Way Home. Um, but then you have the new Jurassic Park movie as well, which also, I mean, it didn't do it didn't do as great as people were hoping it would. But I still sat down and I watched that with my wife. Of course. And I was like, you know, for the callbacks alone in this movie, it made my heart happy. You know, I was totally fine with it. And the callbacks are what made it, you know. Did, did you watch the extended version or on Peacock or was it the theatrical? No, I didn't. I just watched the theatrical. Yeah, so did I. And yeah, it was, it was definitely worth it to me. You know, but that was one where it worked. It's, it's what they should have done. Um, it could have been better, of course. It was just, yeah. you know, for me, it was, it was more along the lines of it took so many great pieces and nods from the original, but then the actual like premise of the original and the plot of the original and the, the thrill from the original, they took that out of it completely without yeah. mixing in any of the new stuff. You know, like you leave the last one, Fallen Kingdom or, or whatever that last one was. Yeah. Um, and you leave the last one and it's a, like in the end credits, it's like dinosaurs are now going to be running around L.A. in New York and mm-hmm. the next movie because you know they're going to do another one. You're like, yeah. you're waiting for years and you're like the next one, it's going to like two and a half hours of like dinosaurs eating people in cabs and, you know, it's going to be this massive fucking... <sighs> crazy yeah. worlds colliding and there was zero of that in the entire movie yeah. except for the yeah, opening they, credits of that four minutes I mean, <laughs> it's like they they kind of sprinkled it in very very minimal but right. e- even when they did though it was like okay well this is le- way less chaotic than I thought it was going <laughs> to be like they're all like well we just live with dinosaurs now <laughs> and, and that's okay well and it was only you know the timeline was only like two years. Yeah, I think it was four. Or four years. Dude, four years, you're telling me that's all dinosaurs are gonna be doing? Like and also too, I thought it was I thought it was interesting that they fa- they almost seemed like it they fast forward so much. Like it was very um what's that one movie? Well, I guess Star Wars would probably compare it the most. But like you know yeah. how Star Wars like the markets, that market scene that they had in Jurassic okay. World? Where they're selling, you know, uh, it- it looked like Star Wars. It did kind of look like that whole scene, it, right? It, I, it, I told my wife, I was like, I feel like this is literally a scene straight out of yeah. Star Wars. The market and they're selling fucking alien guns and technology. But instead of that, it's dinosaurs. Like they're a yeah. And I'm like, okay, so hold on. So they put together this entire black market in four years. Like, and now we're just used to it. Like wouldn't, after four years, wouldn't it be something along the lines of, I mean, we're still kind of getting used to it. Yeah. Donald Trump, it took, it took like six months and we're like, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but still after four years, you're almost like, you don't believe that he's the president. Uh huh. And then that, I was kind of like, and we're feeling that now with grandpa Joe, but I'm kind and of he, like, it's this weird thing where four years, like there's some, there should be some crazy shit. Like people should be losing their homes because T-Rexes are stepping on them. Yeah. Like I want fucking yeah. madness, man. I feel like even after four years of Donald Trump, we were like, we're, we're two years into Joe now and we're still going, Donald Trump was the president. Right. Wow. You know? You almost forget that we, he almost still kind of feels present in our day-to-day lives, even though he's- Oh, like, well, he, he absolutely, oh, well, it's not like he doesn't get talked about by current administration. <laughs> Correct. And then I mean, that is kind of the weird thing where we're always stuck in- but, you know, that's where we, we all go back to the CGI thing, right? And this yeah. fake movie and fake content. 
we like the Donald Trump. I mean, that's just whether no matter who you vote for, you might not like him as a person because he's a little wild yeah. for sure and eccentric. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of negatives, but the one pro that he did is he pulled out a lot of crazy, and there's more crazy in the world now. But I think us humans, we just like it. We like that fake crazy. We like the tweets, you know, oh, yeah. like we dig it. Um, and that's, I think, where we, we have that CGI mentality where we like the fake. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the world sci-fi stuff. Good point. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And maybe that's why we keep talking about them. You know, because like now it's Andrew Tate is like the big thing where, you know. The top I mean? G, yeah. The top G, man. And he's getting banned from all these fucking social networks. And he's like this. Like, I might even cut this part out, or I might keep it in, I don't know. But I don't want to give them a platform, but that's what everyone says. Yeah. But then they give them a platform, like, by yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, And then, you know, he gets canceled, but he's also canceling him, like Joe Rogan. You try to cancel these guys, they become stronger, and more people get to know about them. Like, well, their, yeah, their whole philosophy, you just increased it, right? That's right. Because that's, I mean... Yeah, I mean, cut it out if you want, but isn't that slightly alarming that anybody would get canceled ever? I mean, unless you're saying, like, you know, bring back the Nazi regime. Like, I don't know why we would be canceling anyone, you know? That's, that's true. I mean, the whole, the whole cancel culture thing is just getting so out of hand. Because, again, you go back to, like what you just said, the fact that we can get canceled, like at all, no matter who you are, what you do, the fact that you can is kind of scary because yep. who's in charge of that? Who gets to decide? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and us human, we're, we're so tribal anyway, whether it's football, yeah. whether, it's, whether it's politics, religion, um, the movies we like, the, the, the gender and the sex that we're into or that we think we are or the animals that we like. I mean, you ever meet, like I'm a dog person. You ever meet someone that has a cat? And you don't That's like cats? Brother. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're like the stupidest thing in the world. You look at them like they're crazy. You're like, you like cats? Ugh. Yeah. You don't have a dog? What? Like, we're so tribal. We're so weird. I know. And, and the fact that we can, we can rely on one group, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or the government, or anybody that we can rely on one group or one person to decide whether or not we should get canceled is scary because that one person is going to be tribal. Yeah. Somehow they're going to be in one group or the other, and it might not be your group. And if it's not your yeah. group, you could say something silly that they don't like, and you yeah, get pulled like, the rest of your life. I feel like we just have an all-encompassing being sitting on a chair deciding, you know, who's Im impartial to anything and not biased at all. See, it, like, you're absolutely right. It's like whoever's hitting that cancel button, it's like, well, you definitely swing a certain way, you know? And you know how we know that is because all of us swing one certain way. Oh, absolutely. But the scary part is, is we're so influenced as humans. Oh. And these old motherfuckers above us that decide everything, um, or young, depending on what social platform you're talking about. But these guys, they are, they are influenced as well, whether that's monetarily, you know, and they get bribed or... They just get influenced by outside perspectives. Like, unless there's some yeah. person that's locked in a room, blocked from society, that doesn't know, you know, left from right and up and down, or it maybe it is some AI technology that's constantly learning. But even that AI technology is interesting because the AIs are doing now, they're, um, they're evolving and they're, they're, they're learning information based off the internet. And the only reason the internet is as strong as it is is because everyone's on the internet. So you're, we're feeding information to this internet and, you know, the more Google searches that you put in, the more that algorithm learns and then it gathers, gathers information from other sources like blogs and videos and podcasts. And then it yeah. just creates this machine that's, that's forever learning, but it's influenced by everybody else. So that's, what's kind of scary is we're always going to be influenced by what's around us. So even if there is someone up top that is thinking left, they might be influenced temporarily to the right. And then boom, now this, this whole structure has changed. And yeah. It's changing constantly. And it's, whew, it's wicked, man. Well, I think 
I, I think even scarier than that is you're almost, it's almost expected of you to be influenced, right? Mm-hmm. It, like, in other words, like, God forbid somebody do their own research on something and develop their own opinion other than the mainstream influential opinion. You, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where, I mean, you could, I, you could go on forever about that, where it's, it's like, when did we, when did we lose the ability to think for ourselves? Yeah. You know, That's when, it. when did, when did that go out the window that, well, no, I did some reading and through my research, I've come to the conclusion for me as an individual, well, well, you, you must be a conspiracy theorist then if you're doing your own research, you know what I mean? I don't, I, to me, that's even more threatening where. That is. when did we take the turn where we're not allowed to think as individuals anymore, you know? Mm, so true. And I think a lot of that has to do with probably scared of getting canceled. I mean, I know, I mean, I don't know a lot of times when I'm creating content or doing a podcast or something like I even just said it subconsciously. Uh, I was just like, I should probably take that out. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like I didn't yeah, even think about that. Right. But, like why though? Fucking, I don't have a boss. Like, what, what am I worried about? But I'm also worried about, like, other people spreading it, thinking I have an agenda, taking it out of place, taking it out of context. Um, but the fact that we have our own thoughts is, is what's so interesting. I think we shouldn't cancel anybody. Like, you know, you go back to Andrew Tate, you know, that clown, <clears throat> He, which, by the way, he makes some very interesting points, and some of them are very accurate. Uh, yeah. But his rhetoric and his, just like Donald Trump, I mean, Donald Trump, if you transcribe his crazy, idiotic speeches and rhetoric, there's my, maybe there's a one person in there that makes sense. Maybe it's 2%. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, he's saying a lot of shit where there's a lot of corruption and all that. So you can find good stuff in a lot of people. And Andrew Tate, there's a lot of <laughs> stupid stuff that he says. Oh, yeah. But the fact that we canceled him is just, saying to other people okay zero of what he's saying makes sense which in fact yeah if there's some things in there that make sense that people can get value out of keep all the bullshit but then parallel to that you have to have counter arguments that go against what he's saying so who's deciding if that counter argument is accurate if yeah. you're saying andrew tate you're incorrect who who's saying it's incorrect because all these words that we speak and all these sayings and all these places that we, everything's made up. We invented language. We invented everything. <laughs> so who decided that this was right and wrong? Because by the way, presidents way back in the day, which was only about two people ago, yeah, thought that slaves were a good idea. Mm. So presidents, if you didn't have a slave back then, they were like, you know, you should probably get a slave. But Mr. President, I don't have the resources to get a slave. Eh, we'll help you. Everyone should have a slave. Like, it was a thing. It was okay to do. But now, obviously, we know that that is, that is not okay. Who's to decide? Like, things are changing constantly. So what if 10 years ago, everyone's like, you know, Andrew Tate was kind of right. What if it changes? Then you well, not him for nothing. Yeah, not only that, but it's like, why do we continue to live in a black and white society where it's like, where, where you're talking about, and no, I'm not talking about race. Everybody calm down, okay? What I'm talking about is Andrew Tate, for example, why can't he have one point that's solid and makes sense and one that sucks? Why, are, why do we, because he throws something out there that sucks, we got to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can't take his solid sound point and apply it to our lives because in a separate video, he said something that was dumb. That's so right. we can't take the good because once upon a time there was bad, like, that that black and whiteness is like it's it's not it's not good yeah dude and it's all kind of in embodied in this cancel thing you know like there's a thousand examples in in celebrity culture like kevin hart when he tried to yeah. get canceled because he said a gay joke like 10 years ago and they didn't want him to host the oscars like it's okay that he made that gay joke and i would even say let me say this it's okay if he was homophobic 10 years ago yeah. But now he's not. So you don't have to watch his movies 10 years ago, but don't not watch his movies now because he's, you know, not a homophobic now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Kevin Spacey, like he's a dirtbag. Bill Cosby, he's a rapist. 
Yeah. I'm not going to not watch Bill Cosby's set 15 years ago. That shit was hilarious. Yeah. But it's okay to watch that, appreciate that at that time, and then now look at him and say he's a piece of shit. Like, we, we need to stop thinking past, future. It's okay that we constantly change and evolve and adapt, but we can't erase everything. Oh, yeah. Crazy Absolutely talk. not. If you, if you don't... Uh, if. If you don't have downfalls, you don't have growth, right? If you ignore the shortcomings, how are you, as a society, as an individual, how are you ever going to grow uh, if you're trying to get rid of the stepping stones, if, if that even makes sense? But not only that, like even when you're pointing out individual people, that's in a spotlight, whereas I'd like to look at everybody and be like, uh, we all suck, and we all have downfalls, and we've all done terrible things in our lives like every single one of us deserves to be canceled you, right. you know yeah that's so true yeah not only do we deserve to be canceled but i mean at some points we deserve to be heard too yeah right so that's that's why it's kind of the challenge of it's okay to look at different parts of our lives but we all got stuff to say and we don't know if there's value in that until we say it and, you know, if, if you say something that's a value, John, I might get value out of it, but there might not be anybody that gets value out of it. Yeah. I shouldn't cancel you because then that's not going to give me that value. Like, I need yeah. that value, even though no one else does. But you got to put your shit out there and you got to do it. And uh, that's what's kind of funky now is because we're, we're starting to get in this weird tangent where, you know, I don't know if it's because of there's so much content and it's getting more and more um, mainstream. Yeah. So maybe it's getting more and more looked at. But it kind of worries me from like being a content creator like 10 years from now. You know, is there going to be laws based on oh, what you yeah. can't say? You know, because now there's kind of laws, but they're not called laws. They're called terms and conditions. <laughs> when you post something, yeah. oh, you've breached our... Terms and conditions. Are You've guidelines. breached our community guidelines. That's you are uh, now banned. Yeah, I even uh, there was one podcast clip that I posted on YouTube, and um, it was during the pandemic when I started doing all these virtual podcasts. And one of my buddies uh, got COVID really bad, mm. and um, his whole family got it, like his kids, his wife, all those. And I posted this little clip of like what he went through. We didn't talk about uh, vaccinations. We didn't talk about uh, it was bullshit. Like we didn't, none of those keywords. We just talked about he had the pandemic. This is how he overcame it. You know, through rest, he did get the vaccine, but we talked a lot about rest and vitamin D and all that stuff. And it got pulled from YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff. And it said, because it, it, um, I forget the exact terminology, but. Yeah. Click here to learn, you know, actual facts about COVID-19. So anything that you said that was COVID related and it wasn't factual. Well, yeah, yeah, of course it's not factual because I'm just a dude that hosts a podcast that talked to a buddy of mine. That's it. Gosh, if that's the guideline, man, I'm shocked that Rogan has not been blasted off of the face of the earth yet. But he kind of has. Yeah. The poor bastard. He's been, but you know, that's what's so crazy is like, it's okay. Have him out there no matter who he has or you know, what guess he, let him fucking spew whatever bullshit he wants and whatever facts that he wants or whatever motivational stuff. Cause there's a lot of good stuff in there. There's there might be yeah. bad stuff depending on who you are, but then have another podcast that counteracts it. You know, we were so comfortable for so long with CNN versus Fox. Yeah. But now I can't have Andrew Tate versus fucking Billy Waite. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like give me a, give me an opposite Andrew Tate then. Don't cancel one idiot and then, because then what are we going to have? Just a bunch of woke fucking abiding by the rules. Well, we're going to have Joe Biden. <laughs> That's who we'll have. We'll all be happy with it. We'll just have a bunch of Joe Bidens. <laughs> uh, no, I, even if you, I don't know, I, even if you look at Rogan, like in the thick of COVID, right? It was people who didn't listen to Rogan. What did, what did they think Rogan's podcast was? They thought it was a, a Republican, you know, propaganda, mm -hmm. uh, bash the government, COVID isn't real type podcast, 
But again, that's going back to narrative and like what we're told to think. But if you actually listen to Rogan, yes, in in recent years, he's gone heavy, heavy right, heavy. He talks about COVID a lot. However, the majority of his podcast is him basically just bullshitting with what other, whatever guest he has and talking about doing mushrooms. That's right. But, but, but we, we now, if you don't listen, you've been taught to think that it's like, oh, he's just crazy right-wing conspiracy theorist where this goes back to maybe. And here's a far-out thought, Tony. Okay, so buckle up and bear with me as I say it. I got my tin foot on. Do it. Maybe it's a possibility as human beings that we could just do our own research and think for ourselves. What? What's that? Crazy. I know. Good morrow, Johnny. What's an odd thought? <laughs> and me, dude, I've been a, uh, I've, I've listened to Rogan for a decade. You know, like, yeah. he's obviously one of, just like a lot of people, the, one of the big reasons why I started the podcast was because uh, I just knew it was just guys shooting the shit. And I was like, I want to do yeah. that with my friends. Because of Rogan, because that's what he, that's typically what he does. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, he's grown an audience. And of course, as he's gotten older and more intelligent and he's had more people on and a bigger viewing, just naturally it happens where he's going to have some controversial guests on. But a lot of people don't know that he's had like Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, like yeah. I don't even know the last Republican senator or congressman or governor that he's had on. I mean, maybe the Texas governor, I think he might have had on. He primarily has a lot of his opposite beliefs on, which, well, is so, which is so interesting about him. I mean, a lot of people don't even know that he's a huge Bernie supporter. Like, Joe yep. Rogan wanted Bernie Sanders to be president, but you've been taught to believe that he's just as far right as they come, but just listen for yourself, you know? Yeah, dude, and that's the thing. That's what's, again, that's what's scary about this whole Andrew Tate thing and so many other thousands of examples, is if you just listen to the bulk of the content, there's some shitty stuff in there, sure, yeah. but there's also some really good stuff in there. You know, if you if you've known Rogan and listened to Rogan, listen to all these other you know different people, and you understand who these people are. You know, same thing with me, same thing with you. But I think maybe it's just our attention span that we just don't give ourselves time to learn. Right, read we headlines. Form, yeah. We form an opinion based off of a headline. That's right. When and there's uh, when there's meat and that. bones. Yeah, when there's still meat and bones that need to be dissected, but yet we're, we only have the time for the three to five seconds that it takes to read a headline, and then we know everything we need to know, right? That's, that's the way we operate is, well, I read this, and this is what it is, tried and true, black and white, right there, right, yeah. you know? And, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I, I relate a lot of it to, like, uh, Tonight Shows, you know, like mm. those late night Tonight Shows. Have you ever, like, only, do a social experiment, if anybody's listening, do the social experiment where, let's say, I don't know. Robert De Niro comes on Jimmy Fallon. You don't know anything about Robert De Niro, okay? He talks to Jimmy Fallon to promote an upcoming movie. He gets four minutes to do that on The Tonight Show. Are you going to see that movie? Eh, probably not, because you don't know anything about it. There's no, there's no mustard involved in that movie, and that's kind of how we're living, you know, with everybody. Is like if I meet someone for the first time and I go, hey, man, what's up? You know, how, how are you? And you're wearing a Trump hat. Automatically, you're an asshole. Oh, oh you're, yeah. You're a racist. Like, we're automatic. You don't even know this person. You're, you're just giving them that narrative that is in the back of your head. And vice versa, right? Like, let's say if you're walking around with a, a Hillary 2020 shirt on. I get it, dude. Like, who you voted for, what you believe in. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's talk about it if you really want to know. But if you don't want to know, then it shouldn't bother you. But you have what to be able to talk about things. Or how about this? Even if you said to somebody, I don't like Joe Biden. I didn't vote for him. I don't like him. What is somebody's automatic opinion going to be of you? Trump. <laughs> oh, you're a Trump. And then, now listen, what if they went, huh, I don't like Trump either. I didn't vote for Trump. You know what I mean? It's, but there we are, black and white again, where it's, you, you can only, you are only allowed to be one side or the other. Yeah, you didn't know that? That's, that's what a true democratic country is is you That's a true american yeah god bless america <laughs> you know but we uh yeah we kind of went off for like a, a four minute tangent there on on politics but you know there's a lot of truth when it comes to politics religion and and culture where it's kind of like all mixed into this left and right black and white as you say up and down 
You know, if you if you like Marvel movies, you can't also be educated. You know, like if you read comics, you can't also be book smart. You know, like if you're street smart, you can't also be a graduate. Like there's there's we put ourselves in these categories and it's so fucking crazy because there's so many different there's seven billion people on the earth and not one person is the same. So how the fuck do you think that you know everything there is to know about one person or a group of people like without talking to them? And that is what is so sexy about a podcast. God, it's just such a yeah. great form, man. You know, where you could just sit down and you could talk. Like I feel like I know more about you than a lot of people that I've had on, and we've never met in person. Nope. But through the art form of podcasting and just talking to each other, we know yeah. a lot about each other and vice versa, and that's through content as well. Imagine if like your content, half your content is canceled, and I couldn't see half of it, then I wouldn't know who you are as a person. Yeah. You know, and, and it, it takes out a big chunk of that, of your life. Yeah. And that makes who you, who, you know, you are. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the power of even going full circle. That's the power again of authentic content Mm -hmm. is where I could even say you and I have never met in person before, but there's acquaintances that I have within miles of me that I hang out with on occasion where I probably don't know as well as what I feel I've come to know you as over the past couple of months, just through content alone. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. And there, there is something so beautiful about that. And I, I plan on getting deeper a lot more, uh, spoiler alert, because, you know, I'm going back and forth on this, the type of content I'm creating where I'm just obviously pulling clips from uh, my video podcast, but also to telling about real life stories and how I've overcome that. And then, you know, the, the wife and I, spoiler alert, the wife and I have been uh, trying to have a kid for years. And we've done mm. IUIs and IVFs and all that. And I haven't really talked about it, but I've been compiling content and capturing all the stuff and, you know, doing the hormone shots that, that my wife has, my wife has been a trooper going through all this and it's stressful and there's a lot of stuff, in yeah. but there's so many millions of people out there that deal with that. And I feel like the more real that we are and the more content that we see that of, uh, coupled and sprinkled with the funny podcast tony and all that of course because that's who i am but even if you're not that even if you're just only the serious real authentic person man that is we just need more of that we need more realness and that's why the andrew tate thing i keep saying that but that's such a great example of just if he's a dickhead he's a dickhead but we need that yeah you know like we need a dickhead out there to let us know that's a human that exists because if you know like, imagine if you never knew what a tiger was, <clears throat> if you never knew what a tiger was. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Right? And you're out in the jungle, and then you see that for the first time. <laughs> yeah, you see that for the first time, and you're like, what is that? Like, I want to know what that is before I go mm-hmm. into the jungle. And if an Andrew Tate does really exist, I need to know what he is before I see him in real life. You know, like it's okay to keep it out there, but I think that authentic, real content, whether it's good or bad, I think we need more of that out there. I would agree. We live in, uh, some may disagree, but arguably the greatest time in history that you could possibly live in. Like, look, look at the resources that we have at our fingertips. Why not utilize them? You know, gnarly. Yeah, it is. It is unbelievable. And a lot of people say that it's a shitty time and there's a lot going on and, I think that's maybe true. It's not it's true, shittiest, though. Yeah, well, it's true, but there's also been crappy times no matter what part of history right. you've been in, you know? And, you know, you, we could say it's a great time in history, but also there's, it's going to get better. It's always going to get better, but it also might get worse. You know, like, we're in this weird time where it's pretty good. Like, there's not a lot of bad shit going on. You know, like when you're in when you're in this bubble anyway, of course, you got the war on uh, Ukraine and you got fucking China, those those jabronis, what they got going on there. Like there's a lot of wild shit out there. But the fact of like to your point of the resources you have and the ability to be who you are and be your authentic self. And I don't know if that's going to be around for for that much longer. Yeah. Like I feel like something's going to happen. You start seeing it happen a little bit where. You know, I mean, you could put something out and be famous on TikTok tomorrow. Some yeah, story. in the next 12 hours. Right. You know, 6 million people could know who you are. Insane. That's, 
And so if you have Do, something to say that's going to help people, um, man, it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. It's such a powerful time that you can spread that, uh, yeah. that joy and that education, that knowledge. And I, I, it makes me laugh because we, um, the soda nerds on one of our, on one of our TikToks, not everybody agrees with the pop culture, you know, content that, or the points that we make or whatever, but right. somebody, somebody commented and it made me laugh a lot. They go, not everybody needs a podcast. And it just made, it just made me laugh, but it also made me think where it's like, why not though? If, yeah. if there's, if there's the ability to do it, which there is literally at everybody's fingertips. Yeah. Like you just said, if you have something to offer, why would we ever want to stay stuck in a world where our options are Fox News and and CNN or NBC or whatever? You know what I mean? If there's there's 370 million people in the U.S. alone, you know, and we all have different ideas yeah. and some are better than others. And, and some this may shock people, but some might be better than CNN or Fox News. So. Why, so why would you not throw stuff out there if you feel like you have something to offer? Somebody can come across it, and it might help them. It might not be for somebody else, and they can move on to the next person, right? But just that concept where it was funny where, you know, not everybody needs a podcast, but if you got something good to say, why not? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. And, you know, it's such a great outlet, too, to vent. And uh, I, just think, for sure. I just think creating content as a whole is just, it's so fun to... Mm-hmm. To just look back and, you know, we've talked about this before, just to look back and to see those, uh, see those moments in your life that have changed you for the better. Yeah. And that's why I hate, you know, like I still have my MySpace. Mm, I yeah. hate people that, you know, like even my wife tried to do it the other day. She's like, you know, I should go and delete like all these, these pictures. I don't like how I, I was like, no, man, keep just them keep- there because yeah, because you might not ever look at them again, but that's that's not the point. It's the point of the accountability of that's who you are and who you're going to become is going to be way better than that. And the only way that you can capture that is through that content, creating those those photos and videos. You know, a lot of people don't know, but your memory, that's some bullshit. You ever like tell yourself a story like for years? Like you're like, yeah, you know, this is how it happened when I was a kid. We yeah. To, we went skiing here and then I fell off and I hit, you know, I hit Billy's shoe and then his leg broke. And like, there was this whole story that, you know, you told yourself. And then like 10 years later, you talk to like your uncle and he's like, no, dude, that's not how it happened at all. Like I have video of this is what really happened. And you're like, oh, cause your, your mind just like, it's your brain, dude. Like you ever have yeah. a dream? Like it's all fake. It's all fabricated. Like you're, it's only so good, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like She-Hulk. It's only so good. <laughs> Just yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, it's getting kind of narrow. I, I I know you're not too active on Facebook, but it's um it's it's getting to the point now where Facebook has become like the Twitter melting pot. And oh yeah. I posted something the other day. Did you see the thing where I posted is what culture culture affecting cinema? Do you see that? Well, no, I didn't, but if that's a, a true and actual question, I mean yes. Yeah. <laughs> hundred percent yes but it was it was mainly funny because it was a meme of like the hulk and the first avengers grabbing the alien ship or whatever with like one hand yeah. he does it and it does it's like <laughs> train effect and he takes out like a whole alien ship that's the size of empire state building with one hit yeah versus she hulk where he gets hit by a jeep wrangler and falls on the ground <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like, dude, come on, bro. Like, I feel so. I think, yeah, I know this is a hard left, but for the MCU, I think I feel the worst for Hulk fans mm-hmm. because I feel like the MCU has totally just crapped on him completely and hardly ever used him appropriately, you know? Ragnarok. That was it. Yeah, kind of. Still. Yeah. And even that yeah. was very, you know. Takiti. I mean, it was very funny, and mm-hmm. but like the the actual like scenes and of and Avengers was great too, but it was very temporary. But yeah, dude, he he hasn't been utilized at all. I don't know what that is. You know, I I know there's this push of like we need to go a certain way and we need to follow narrative and we need a piece. Yeah. I just don't get studios like that where they can't do both. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like you've had so many years to make Hulk a badass that he is. You could have done Planet Hulk. You could have done, I mean, you could have done a lot of stuff. You chose not to. You, you chose to do She-Hulk first. And I think we need She-Hulk. I think it's, you know, it's great. It's a, it, it's a cool show. But what hurts about it is, though, you just didn't spend the time doing what you need to do mm-hmm. to the Hulk. You know, it's like you want to reboot Superman, but you didn't give Henry Cavill his shot. Like, yeah. it's just those things where you, you should have went one way. You should have went left, but you're going right. Or you should have went right and you went left. Like, it's okay to do both. And that's what, God damn, if that is not the... If talk about headline, that is not the headline of the United States of America where you don't need left or right, like, yeah, or shouldn't be in your vocabulary. It's okay to put and in everything, you oh, know, yeah. have, have Hulk and She Hulk, have fucking, you know, this and that. You when gotta- it comes to entertainment and cinema. You should be able to do whatever the hell you want to do, right? Like, I don't think there's any formula that you should have to cater to. I think your top importance when making a decision should be, is the audience going to like this? Yeah. Not, am I going to upset this side? Am I going to upset that? You know, is this going to be inclusively, all-inclusive, entertaining, you know? Do we have enough Asians? Do we have enough? Okay, everyone count. Yeah. Where, can we get all the uh, the minorities to line up? Let's make sure yeah. we're 50 50. Who's gay in this one? Which one yeah. of you is gay? Let's get you in there. Ooh, there's no gays. Okay, has anybody, has there been any men that has been with men? Maybe you're not gay, but you're experimenting. Show hands. No? Oh, yeah. Okay. Guys, can we hire a couple uh, bisexuals in here? Bring them in. <laughs> I bet if you and I bet and and I'm I'm not I'm not speaking for anybody and I, I I don't want to but I I would assume if you talked to anybody who's transgender or anybody who's gay or they would say the same where it's like uh, no I prefer an actually good product like if you're gonna make a bad product just for the sake of including somebody then I what you know well what about that great movie that was shelved by Jamie Fox and Robert Downey Jr. Did you hear about this? No. Where Robert Downey Jr. was a Mexican? <laughs> no. Ugh. Okay, when we get done, you got to Google that. Um, shelved movie where Robert Downey Jr. was Mexican. It was, it was Jamie Foxx, Robert Downey Jr. Um, who else was in it? Uh, oh, just a slew of incredible actors. What did, they, did they not do it because they thought it would be, no, what, no, they, offensive? They filmed it and everything. But right before you know the pandemic, there's been all this cancel culture and, you know. Yeah. They got afraid. Fine. Yeah, they're looking at like blackface from 15 years ago from sketch comedy and they're canceling people. And so they're like, we can't put this out right now. So they just didn't put it out. But it's out there. Like it's filmed. It's done. And it looks incredible. And the whole premise just. Yeah. But, you know, the, this is the problem where if they put it out, they might upset what they think is the, a large amount of the population. In so facto, it's not. It's a very small percentage of the population. They're, they're not going to upset anybody from Mexico. You know who they're going to upset is yeah. s- suburban moms in Connecticut. That, that's who they're going to upset, Karen. right? They're going to accept Karens, yeah. I, I know there's been multiple cases like that, whether it's what you're talking about or even when, um, when they did like the Stephen Hawking movie. Yes. And yeah. they're, they're like, exactly. people got upset. They literally said, why would you not? Why would you not use a disabled person to be the actor? And it's like, because it's acting. It's because crazy. it's acting. Yeah, it's, it's crazy the expectations that we have, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all acting. You know, same thing with comedy. You can't get upset at stand-up comedians for making it's, jokes. It's comedy. It's comedy. Yeah. They get the pass for just about anything. And, and like you said, I think you said the best word, entertainers as a whole should yeah. get the pass. Unless you're giving information that could be uh, detrimental and deadly to that individual, who cares? It's like that same person that's driving down your neighborhood and sees you cutting the grass and maybe you don't use the the right lawnmower that you're supposed to use to get the best of it. And then your neighbor's like, hey, uh, Joe, you shouldn't be using that. You should be using a uh, 42 large with the the yeah. blade is serrated in it. And you're like, Joe, it's my lawn. What do you give a fuck? Yeah, why are you, you're not cutting it. Go away. Yeah, who cares? 
but that's what we feel, right? Like there's a large group of us that look at stuff and say, you should be doing it this way. Okay, well, go make your own movie. Go write your own stand-up. Go or don't watch it. But why are we judging so many people? Don't watch it, right? That's, yeah, that's the big thing. Don't watch it. And then, and trust me, there's a lot of stuff not to watch. Well, there's becoming more too. I think. Yeah. I, I I think a lot of companies are going to start to learn that it's like, well, we need to readjust because mm-hmm. people are now not watching. Yeah, well, I love what Netflix did. They, or did you hear about that petition of uh, everything that happened with Dave Chappelle and his stand-up special? Oh, and- I heard it got. Well, no, but I know there was a like a petition there was- going around for the employees. No, tell me about it. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, real quick, it was just a petition of uh, everything that Dave Chappelle said. There was a lot of people in the LBGTQT community. I think I'm missing one there. Sorry. But everybody in that community that works at Netflix went to the executives and signed this petition and said, hey, if you don't pull Dave Chappelle's stand-up special, you know, we're going to bounce. Because this last one, apparently, unless you watch it, because it's definitely not transphobic, a lot of people were saying that it was. Um so a lot of people were like in that community that worked at Netflix said, hey, we're going to bounce. We're going to leave. Like we're going to leave Netflix if you don't pull that. And the executives were like, okay, leave. Like we're Good. not pulling it. Like that's, we agreed on it. He put it out there. It's already yep. out there. Like we're not going to pull it just because you want. So I think a lot of companies hopefully are going to take the stand and say, we're not going to let these woke employees dictate our future. Yeah. Because, you know, again, what if there's 50 people at a network that thinks this movie or that movie or this show or that show is bullshit, those 50 people are going to decide what 7 billion people get to see. Yeah. What? What are we doing? You know, why are we appeasing everybody? And I yeah. talked a lot about that on previous podcasts about my job where there was a lot, a lot of people who told me what I should and shouldn't do. And they're like, you mm-hmm. know, you shouldn't open your own company, shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. Man, I'm happier than I've ever been. Yeah. And listen to anybody. Well, you know what? You know who you listen to and who you have the discussion with is you go to your wife, the one person you live with, right? Your who is technically your immediate family who you're doing life with and you say, "How do you feel about this?" She goes, "I think it's great." Okay, good, done deal. Then I don't care what anybody else has to say. A stamp of approval. That's it. Yep. You know, and that reminds me of a great quote speaking of Dave Chappelle that he said years ago. I think it might have been on the Chappelle show. Uh, we all do those little monologues. And I think there yeah. was a wild that happened in, in the country, uh, like it does every five years. And he said something along the lines of, you know, listen, we can argue and complain and hate each other all we want, and you could try to fix the world, but why don't you fix the community first? Yeah. And before you do that, why don't you fix your household? Yes. And before you do that, why don't you fix yourself? Yep. And there's so, there's so much truth in that because if, you know, and everyone says this when you're going down in a plane, yeah, the classic oxygen mask, yep. Yeah, put on your mask first, and it's, God, if we can just live our lives a little bit like that, take care of ourselves, take care of, like you said, take care of our spouse, then mm-hmm. we could take care of our block, our cul-de-sac, then you take care of your community, then you could take care of the world if you want, but just focus on yourself first, because if we can all do that at once, and then we can each individually focus on ourselves, I think we'll all be in a better spot. Well, it's the truth, right? Like if you don't take the time to control the things that you actually can control, your entire life is going to be a mess. Mm. It's going to be chaotic. You're not going to be able to be effective in any other. If you cannot control the basic things in life, your own personal life that you are able to control, how are you going to change anything else? That's so true. You're not going to. Yeah. Well said. I think that's a great way to end it. Uh, There you go. It's a fucking mic drop moment if I've ever heard. With, with, uh, I, do that and then also just to cap up everything that we've kind of talked about the past 15 minutes. It's okay to be offended by something, right? Anybody who's listening, you have the absolute right to be offended by whatever you want to be offended by. Where the importance comes in is how you react to the offense that you feel. You can control the reaction. That's where the difference is made, right? That's, that's the importance is around how we, how we choose to react to things that offend us. That's so true. Yeah. Well said. And you know, that goes with everything as well. I mean, when you're sitting in traffic, you could get upset at the guy that, that you could get upset at the guy that cut you off. Yeah. And that could ruin your whole day leading to you spilling coffee, being late to work, 
you know, possibly get in trouble by your boss, then your whole day is ruined and you could be upset. Yeah. Or you could let the guy cut you off, not let it bother you, and then everything's fine. You don't spill your coffee. You make it to work on time. Maybe you get a promotion because you're being so positive and optimistic. Next yeah. thing you know, you find a spouse, you get married, your whole life is beautiful just because you don't let some prick get you upset when he cuts you off. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, life is exactly like that, what you said, Johnny, which is it's not about the things that happen to you. Yeah. How you react to those things. Control the things you can control, but more importantly, pay attention to how you react to every situation. Love it. Now that is, bro. <laughs> At the boom. At the boom. Well, dude, this was fun. It's, uh, you know, from, from having nothing to talk about, I, I think we did yeah. pretty good for about an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, good deal. But for people just listening, uh, I'll, I'll throw up, you know, your handles and stuff here, but uh, where can people find you? Uh, what are your podcasts, plural? Uh, so really, when you're going to be releasing this one, uh, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, it might be a little further than today's date. However, chances are we'll be in a football season, and I do do an NFL podcast, uh, Bowski Bros, B-O-W-S-K-I-B-R-O-S, and we call it the NFL podcast for the average bro. So check it out. We like to... Uh, just talk football and basically BS. So even it. cowboy fans are welcome. Oh, you <laughs> suck. Just kidding. No, that's good stuff. And then, of course, you got Soda Nerds. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I got multiples. I don't know how many you want to put up. But, you know, Bowski Bros, we do football. Soda Nerds is just pop culture and anything nerdy. Well, Johnny, dude, always a pleasure. Uh, as always, talking to you, man. I'll hit you up after this, obviously. But thanks for coming on the show, bud. Yeah, for sure. As always, it was great, man. I love chatting. Indeed, buddy. All right, dude. Enjoy your week, brother. Deuces. Oh, hey there. I'm glad you made it to the end. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm sure you're going to like all the other podcasts that I've done. Um, You can check out some more videos right here. Whether you're watching on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcast, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. I would love you forever, even more than I already do. And uh, tell a friend who needs to hear it. Uh, Until next time, we'll see you later. Peace.